Hey guys, welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Instructional Videos. I am your professor, Dr. Russell Betts, and I'll be going through chapter 10.6, Enzymes. Enzymes are awesome. What are enzymes? They are globular proteins that are present in every cell of the body. So they're proteins. Okay, so all enzymes are proteins, but not all proteins are enzymes. Stay with me. Enzymes act as catalysts. They're catalysts. Not all proteins are catalysts. Some proteins, such as your hair, your fingernails, they don't catalyze the reaction. They just are. They're structural. Okay? Keep that in mind. They accelerate reactions. Because that's what catalysts do, right? They make reactions go faster. Okay? Reactions that typically were slow, now are going fast. Okay? Good, good, good. An enzyme cannot force a reaction to take place. It can simply make a reaction that's going to happen, happen faster. Cool, huh? Cool. That's awesome. So, so catalysts make reactions go faster. Enzymes are biological catalysts. They make some of the reactions in our body that would take weeks, months, or years to happen, happen in a fraction of a second. Maybe not years, but you get the idea. It, that makes them go a lot faster. Now, to understand how this works, at least at a rudimentary level, let me get my face out of here. There we go. I'll take myself right off the slide. You have to understand a few things. First thing, the active site. That is the part of the enzyme where all the catalysis takes place. Or in other words, it's where the magic happens. Okay? It's part of the enzyme where the magic happens. Now, there's also the substrate. The substrate is what's going to dock into the active site. It's going to dock into the active site. Some enzymes require cofactors. They're usually inorganic substances, some maybe ions, for example. Coenzymes, sometimes they require the coenzyme. It's basically a small organic molecule, sometimes. We don't talk much about cofactors and, and uh, coenzymes in this class. But just so this, know what they are. And a lot of times, enzymes will have what's called substrate specificity, which means they'll only react with one kind of substrate. Okay? So a lot of the times in our body, we have one enzyme that'll do this, another enzyme will do that. Uh, they kind of just do whatever. Okay? They kind of do one job. They do it really well. doesn't mean they can't do another job. They probably just can't do it as well. Okay? For example, we have an enzyme called lactase. Lactase is very good at digesting lactose. Not that good at digesting maltose, though. Okay? Maybe it won't even do it at all, even though they're both carbohydrates. All right? So there's that. Now let's put my face back in here. I know you miss me. The enzyme, oh, again, my face is in the way. There, I'll be front and center. Here we go. Now there's two types of models. About, about how the enzyme and the substrate will bind together. One is called the lock and key model, and the other one is the induced fit model. Very, very simple concepts. In the lock and key model of enzyme catalysis, one enzyme will fit with one substrate. In other words, one key, one lock. Wrong key in the lock, nothing happens. Right key in the lock, everything turns. Okay? Think of the lock as the enzyme, and the key as the substrate. Put your key in the door, turn it, everything's lined up perfect, everything will work. Put the wrong key in your lock and turn it, nothing's gonna happen. Or the key won't even go in the lock, it's just too big or too small, or the wrong size. Now in the induced fit model, induced fit model is a little interesting because this uh, means that the active site is flexible enough and it will move around depending on the substrate. In other words, more than one key can open this door because the, the lock is able to bend or mold itself to the substrate a little bit easier. It's also known as the less rigid model. Lock and key is thought of as being very rigid. Induced fit is thought of being very fluffy or very malleable. It will move around depending on the substrate. Now there's limitations to all of this, right? Don't just think that an induced fit model will any old substrate react. They don't. 
but they accept a wider variety of substrates and they will actually reform themselves to accommodate that substrate. And uh, here's just an example, let me get myself out of the way here, of the enzyme substrate. Here's your substrate, glucose. Here's your enzyme, uh, probably sucrase. And they bind together. And now here, look right in here. There's our sucrose molecule. Sorry, pardon me, glucose. I'm saying sucrose. There's our glucose molecule is now bound up to this enzyme. And something's going to happen to him now, now that he's in there. Now, enzymes work by lowering the activation energy. They lower the activation energy. They put the substrate into a position where it's at a low energy state. And when it reacts and goes through its thing, all those energies are lower. So that means the reaction will go faster. Okay, because the, the energies required are much lower. They also put things in proximity. They put everything close together. Remember one of the rules for reactions where things had to collide, right? Well, if you're inside the active site of an enzyme, you're going to be colliding a lot more because there's not a lot of room to move in there, right? So the proximity, you're brought closer together, you're going to hit more often. Remember, hitting is a big part of it. It's collide. Orientation. Well, enzymes are also very good at orienting things. They get things in the right orientation so that when there's collisions, those collisions are very effective and they're probably going to work out. So you've got orientation correct. You've got collisions going on, and you've lowered the activation energy, so you don't have to hit them as hard. Oh, all these things are adding up to a fast reaction. Now, bond energies also tend to weaken inside of the active site so that they'll react even faster. And this all adds up to faster reactions. So, so the active site is where a lot of people say the active site is where all the magic happens. But it's not magic. It's just science. But it seems magical because everything just happens, and it's just so awesome. And that's chapter 10.6. Now, again, short chapter, but a lot to know. Okay, a lot of details in there. You're going to want to write these things down. Okay, make sure you understand the enzyme substrates, enzyme substrate complex, and all that other stuff. Okay, pretty simple, but pretty fun and pretty difficult. If you don't study it, make sure you know it. All right, guys. Now, with that, I'm going to wish you guys good luck. Say it after me. Good chemistry.